Right while she gets united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in a home 49th Street at the bench. Are you struggling with can control and you don't know exactly what you can do in order to help your learning process? Well, in today's video, I wanna give you some pretty unorthodox advice specifically about that. And it's all gonna revolve around one simple premise. You see, I was painting my 100,000 celebration wall, and while I was painting it, it kind of brought me back to when I used to go to spots and just like look at graffiti. And it got me thinking. Nowadays, graffiti is so easily accessible online. You don't really have to go outside in order to look at graffiti. You can just pull up Instagram and look at God knows how many different graffiti artists all at the tap of a couple of buttons on your phone. And while those pictures are great, sure, they're beautiful, they're awesome, they're really cool to look at, they don't give you the full story of the piece. You don't really get to get in there and look at the graffiti. Something I used to do with people I used to mentor way back in the day was we would go to walls, physically go to the walls, and we would literally just learn from the pieces. There's certain things that you can pick up about the process of graffiti that will teach you a lot. Stuff that you just don't get from an Instagram photograph. And that's gonna be what I want you guys to do. Now let me kind of be careful with how I word this, right? Let me come out and say right off the bat, I'm not recommending that anybody goes ahead and trespasses or goes to dangerous areas in order to look at graffiti. Try to find graffiti that's easily accessible and also legal because I don't want to advise any of you guys break the law. And the first thing you want to do is look at the layer that the person went ahead and applied the paint on. With this, you'll be able to see certain lines that they cut. And I'm not even kidding you when I tell you this. You might be looking at the outline and the outline clearly is layered on top of the fill-in. But you might see that the thickness of the outline goes a little bit too far into the fill-in. But you can still see the contour of the spray paint the same size as the outline. However, it's the fill-in color. And that'll tell you that the person actually cut that line back in order to thin that out in order to kind of erase where the outline might have overextended. And then to take that a step further, depending on how you look at the wall, you can actually see the direction that the spray can was angled at in order to catch onto the actual wall itself, which this provides you with a great learning opportunity where you can see exactly how they cut their lines. Maybe the wall has a little bit of texture on it. Maybe it's cinder block. Maybe it's bricks. Maybe they just have a drip or maybe the wall is peeling. If you get close enough to the wall, you can literally look at how the actual little tiny paint particles hit the wall. And that'll tell you the angle they were holding the spray can in, in order to actually hit the wall. It's little things like that, little tips and tricks that really help your can control quite a bit. You'd be surprised at the difference it makes. Because I'll tell you what, while there's certainly no lack of amazing graffiti artists out there with phenomenal can control where they can knock an outline really easily, no problems at all, perfectly clean, most people have to do some cutting back. They gotta do some erasing with a can or with, you know, the, the actual buff paint itself. They gotta do something to touch up their pieces. Now this next thing, admittedly, you can actually see online. You can see it in photographs, in, you know, Instagram or Twitter or wherever you're looking at graffiti. But pay attention to how people flare their lines. You can tell if somebody flared by, you know, just simply holding the can parallel and pulling further away and getting closer, or if they flared by actually angling their wrist. And the way you'll be able to tell this is a flare where the person is simply just holding the can parallel to the wall and only changing the distance. That kind of flare will maintain a good circle, a nice shape to that. As to where somebody who angles their wrist, that same circle, that ring, will dissipate in a specific direction, indicating the direction that they were flaring to. A really good place in order to kind of examine flares would be something like Philly hand styles. And once again, you can see this type of thing online. You don't have to go there in person in order to go ahead and see that. Something else that I think is very useful that's not even about pieces. This is a tip about throw ups as well as hand styles. And once again, it's a tip that I think is pretty unorthodox. And that is check out the line order of the spray paint. When you're at the wall, you can physically see where a line from spray paint overlaps another line. So when you have somebody who is doing a hand style, let's just say they're doing a pretty fancy hand style and a part of the letter overlaps another part of the letter, well, you might be able to see which line was done first, which will help you keep track of kind of the line order they were using for the throw up. And this is particularly helpful for throw ups because it lets you know the most efficient way to go ahead and outline your throw up, which if you care more about bombing, that's going to be something that's semi-important. You don't necessarily have to optimize it in order to make it like 0.5 seconds in order to outline the entire thing, right? There's no need to kind of get dramatic and overdo it, but making sure it doesn't take you an eon in order to go ahead and outline a simple throwy is pretty important. I've seen people where they'll go ahead and they'll do their throwy and they'll outline the whole thing. They'll end the line up here and then they'll come all the way down at the bottom of their throwy to start the next letter when they could very easily just continue this line in order to do the next part of the letter structure. But because they haven't thought about their line order, that type of thing doesn't really come to mind for them. And once again, not that you have to get over the top or ridiculous with your line orders for throwies, it is at least something you want to pay a little bit of attention to because something like that can also help you increase flow. You'll oftentimes see this in a throwy where somebody might, for example, be at the bottom of the letter and end one letter and immediately do a little hairpin turn directly into the next letter. And that's because they understand their line order, they've optimized it a little bit, and they realize, hey, you know what? Instead of breaking this line, lifting my can, lifting my finger, 
then going back to the next letter, I can just loop right into the next one and do it a little bit faster. Now keep in mind, yes, while all of these tips are things that you would observe when you go physically to the wall and kind of look at what it is you're looking at, whether it's pieces, hand styles, or throw-ups, you still have to put in the practice with these things, and there is going to be a bit of a learning curve. You're not going to nail these out of the park right off the bat, but observing these things in other people's walls in person cuts down on your learning time, because had you not gone to that wall and observed some of these can control tips and tricks, then it might have otherwise taken you years to figure some of those things out. For example, I went to a wall one time and I learned, I realized that somebody was doing lightning on their pieces by holding their can upside down. And it was resulting in a very, very nice kind of lightning effect. And then they were doing this kind of like explosion fade in the middle of their letters out of nowhere by pressing the can against the wall. And the only way I was able to kind of learn those things was by physically going to the spot and seeing it for myself. Those right there are the kind of tips and tricks that would take you years to figure out. And if the only place you see graffiti is online on Instagram and other places like that, then you're going to miss out on a lot of those kinds of tricks. So go outside, look at some graffiti, and really pay attention to what's happening on that wall. And I promise you, you're going to learn a bunch of different things that you can test out and try and practice on your own time. But dudes, that's pretty much it for today's video. If you want to check out your more typical can control type video, check out this playlist here at the top. It's got everything you need to know about graffiti, including two videos specifically about can control and techniques you can go ahead and practice. And if this playlist right here isn't enough for you, I published a bunch of how to do graffiti books in the description down below. Feel free to go ahead and check those out as well. And down here, we got more graffiti content for you. But on that note, I'm gonna head on out of here. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you back here next week.